September 28th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Jeremiah chapters 9 and 10 from the Old Testament I wish that my head were a well full of water and my eyes were a fountain full of tears. If they were, I could cry day and night for those of my dear people who have been killed. I wish I had a lodging place in the desert where I could spend some time like a weary traveler. Then I would desert my people and walk away from them because they are all unfaithful to God, a congregation of people that has been disloyal to Him. The Lord says, These people are like soldiers who have readied their bows. Their tongues are always ready to shoot out lies. They have become powerful in the land, but they have not done so by honest means. Indeed, they do one evil thing after another, and do not pay attention to me. Everyone must be on his guard around his friends. He must not even trust any of his relatives, for every one of them will find some way to cheat him, and all of his friends will tell lies about him. One friend deceives another, and no one tells the truth. These people have trained themselves to tell lies. They do wrong and are unable to repent. They do one act of violence after another and one deceitful thing after another. They refuse to pay attention to me, says the Lord. Therefore the Lord who rules over all says, I will now purify them in the fires of affliction and test them. The wickedness of my dear people has left me no choice. What else can I do? Their tongues are like deadly arrows. They are always telling lies. Friendly words for their neighbors come from their mouths, but their minds are thinking up ways to trap them. I will certainly punish them for doing such things, says the Lord. I will certainly bring retribution on such a nation as this. I said, I will weep and mourn for the grasslands on the mountains. I will sing a mournful song for the pastures in the wilderness, because they are so scorched no one travels through them. The sound of livestock is no longer heard there. Even the birds in the sky and the wild animals in the fields have fled and are gone. The Lord said, I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins. Jackals will make their home there. I will destroy the towns of Judah so that no one will be able to live in them. I said, who is wise enough to understand why this has happened? Who has a word from the Lord that can explain it? Why does the land lie in ruins? Why is it as scorched as a desert through which no one travels? The Lord answered, This has happened because these people have rejected my laws which I gave them. They have not obeyed me or followed those laws. Instead, they have followed the stubborn inclinations of their own hearts. They have paid allegiance to the gods called Baal, as their fathers taught them to do. So then listen to what I, the Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, say. I will make these people eat the bitter food of suffering and drink the poison water of judgment. I will scatter them among nations that neither they nor their ancestors have known anything about. I will send people chasing after them with swords until I have destroyed them. The Lord who rules over all told me to say to this people, Take note of what I say. Call for the women who mourn for the dead. Summon those who are the most skilled at it. I said, Indeed, let them come quickly and sing a song of mourning for us. Let them wail loudly until tears stream from our own eyes and our eyelids overflow with water. For the sound of wailing is soon to be heard in Zion. They will wail. We are utterly ruined. We are completely disgraced, for our houses have been torn down, and we must leave our land. I said, So now, you wailing women, hear what the Lord says. Open your ears to the words from his song. Teach your daughters this mournful song, and each of you teach your neighbor this lament. Death has climbed in through our windows. It has entered into our fortified houses. It has taken away our children who play in the streets. It has taken away our young men who gather in the city squares. Tell your daughters and neighbors, the Lord says, the dead bodies of people will lie scattered everywhere, like manure scattered on a field. They will lie scattered on the ground like grain that has been cut down but has not been gathered. The Lord says, wise people should not boast that they are wise. Powerful people should not boast that they are powerful. Rich people should not boast that they are rich. If people want to boast, they should boast about this. They should boast that they understand and know me. They should boast that they know and understand that I, the Lord, act out of faithfulness, fairness, and justice in the earth, and that I desire people to do these things, says the Lord. 
The Lord says, watch out. The time is soon coming when I will punish all those who are circumcised only in the flesh. That is, I will punish the Egyptians, the Judeans, the Edomites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, and all the desert people who cut their hair short at the temples. I will do so because none of the people of these nations are really circumcised in the Lord's sight. Moreover, none of the people of Israel are circumcised when it comes to their hearts. You people of Israel, listen to what the Lord has to say to you. The Lord says, do not start following pagan religious practices. Do not be in awe of signs that occur in the sky, even though the nations hold them in awe. For the religion of these people is worthless. They cut down a tree in the forest, and a craftsman makes it into an idol with his tools. He decorates it with overlays of silver and gold. He uses hammer and nails to fasten it together so that it will not fall over. Such idols are like scarecrows in a cucumber field. They cannot talk. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of them because they cannot hurt you, and they do not have any power to help you. I said, There is no one like you, Lord. You are great, and you are renowned for your power. Everyone should revere you, O King of all nations, because you deserve to be revered. For there is no one like you among any of the wise people of the nations, nor among any of their kings. The people of those nations are both stupid and foolish. Instruction from a wooden idol is worthless. Hammered out silver is brought from Tarshish, and gold is brought from Euphaz to cover those idols. They are the handiwork of carpenters and goldsmiths. They are clothed in blue and purple clothes. They are all made by skillful workers. The Lord is the only true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. When he shows his anger, the earth shakes. None of the nations can stand up to his fury. You people of Israel should tell those nations this. These gods did not make heaven and earth. They will disappear from the earth and from under the heavens. The Lord is the one who by his power made the earth. He is the one who by his wisdom established the world, and by his understanding he spread out the skies. When his voice thunders, the heavenly ocean roars. He makes the clouds rise from the far-off horizons. He makes the lightning flash out in the midst of the rain. He unleashes the wind from the places where he stores it. All these idolaters will prove to be stupid and ignorant. Every goldsmith will be disgraced by the idol he made, for the image he forges is merely a sham. There is no breath in any of these idols. They are worthless, mere objects to be mocked. When the time comes to punish them, they will be destroyed. The Lord, who is the inheritance of Jacob's descendants, is not like them. He is the one who created everything, and the people of Israel are those he claims as his own. He is known as the Lord who rules over all. Gather your belongings together and prepare to leave the land, you people of Jerusalem who are being besieged. For the Lord says, I will now throw out those who live in this land. I will bring so much trouble on them that they will actually fill it. And I cried out, we are doomed. Our wound is severe. We once thought this is only an illness, and we will be able to bear it. But our tents have been destroyed. The ropes that held them in place have been ripped apart. Our children are gone and are not coming back. There is no survivor to put our tents back up and no one left to hang their tent curtains in place. For our leaders are stupid. They have not sought the Lord's advice, so they do not act wisely and the people they are responsible for have all been scattered. Listen, news is coming even now. The rumble of a great army is heard approaching from a land in the north. It is coming to turn the towns of Judah into rubble, places where only jackals live. Lord, we know that people do not control their own destiny. It is not in their power to determine what will happen to them. Correct us, Lord, but only in due measure. Do not punish us in anger or you will reduce us to nothing. Vent your anger on the nations that do not acknowledge you. Vent it on the people who do not worship you, for they have destroyed the people of Jacob. They have completely destroyed them and left their homeland in utter ruin. God, I wonder how many uh, Christians pray for their own countries or cities or towns or nations the way that Jeremiah is, is praying for all the people that are around him. His heart is just breaking. 
for the people he loves and and how how they're going down such a wrong path wrong is not even a strong enough word but they're just going down the wrong path in in so many ways god allow our hearts to break for those people around us whether it just be in our neighborhood in our communities perhaps in our nation um, we know our leaders aren't seeking your advice we know our leaders aren't turning to you we know that the trickle down of that is laws that that don't abide by what you have asked us to do here on earth we know um, that those laws are just like what jeremiah is concerned about that people are being scattered and sending off into all sorts of directions instead of pointing back to the one true leader uh, of all of us god we also know that wisdom isn't really high in our country <laughs> in a variety of ways wisdom isn't really high and it's because the idols that we're seeking aren't created by you it's because what we're seeking through entertainment and relationships and, and comfort are things that we've created and so it's our own level of intelligence that have created those things you who actually created wisdom offer us a different opportunity offer us a different road to take uh, with a destiny that does lead from wisdom into eternal life God allow us to pray for people around us today whether our heart is being led to pray for friends and people we know maybe it's people in our community we don't know maybe our prayers are being led to pray for the people who are in charge leaders who as Jeremiah put it are being stupid or <laughs> making the wrong decisions and aren't seeking you Maybe our hearts are being led to pray for for the country that we live in. Maybe our hearts are, are being led to pray for the entire world. Because everything that Jeremiah is talking about, it feels like it's going on all over the world. Headlines from every country in the world scream the exact same thing that Jeremiah and his heart are breaking over. God, I do pray for the people of this earth. I pray that they seek your wisdom. I pray that they seek a heart that is one in yours. I pray that they understand that the idols that they have encircled themselves with, gosh, I just pray that that realization, that that wisdom, that those idols will never be able to give them anything, anything close to what you can. God, I just ask for that wisdom. And it has to be your wisdom that comes upon them because they're definitely not going to figure that out on their own. I didn't figure that out on my own. You showed me. God, I pray for our leaders that I have to pray for a miracle because I know it's only you who could change their hearts. They seek so much of worldly things, material things, of things that I know Satan's so incredibly happy that they're choosing. They seek to pass laws that go against everything you've asked us to do. God, I do pray for a miracle in, in the lives, in the hearts, and in the decisions and in the wisdom of our leaders who are supposed to be guiding our country and the other countries around the world. God, I do pray for the people I'm in contact with. Some of them are seeking your heart passionately. Some of them are kind of in between, and, and I, see, I see arrogance, I see denial, I see, um, just like Jeremiah is talking about, I see this like gossiping back talk about other people, this kind of two-faced thing. And then, God, I have people in my life who are just truly lost. God, I pray for all of them. I pray for encouragement for those who are seeking you. It's not always an easy road, believe me. I know it's not an easy road, so I pray for strength and encouragement for them. For people who are kind of sitting on the fence and doing this two-faced, talk behind my neighbor's back type of thing and go to church on Sunday, God, I pray that they understand that you clearly show them what they're doing. I suspect some of them already know and that the reason that they're doing that usually comes from a sense of insecurity, of trying to bring others down to where they are. And I just ask that you provide that confidence that they need, that confidence in you that you are their masterpiece, that you treasure them, that you love them. And then God, for the people who, who haven't realized that you are wisdom, who haven't realized that you are grace and love and mercy, I pray that 
if it's your will that it is their time to learn about that. And if it's their time to learn about it, that whoever you're sending into their lives to teach them about it is obedient. And then goes along and walks along with them in that walk. God, I pray for all these people. My heart is breaking for this world. It seems like you should have come a long time ago. <laughs> your son should have come a long time ago. I'm not questioning your decisions. It just seems like we are destroying ourselves more and more each day. And maybe that's what we have to get to before your son returns. I, I don't know. But I do know that my heart is breaking for all people who don't know you. Who don't know that incredible grace and mercy that has been shown to me over and over and over again in my life. God, I thank you for your wisdom. I thank you for sharing your wisdom with so many of us. In your son's name I pray. Amen.